Hey friends, well, we just turned 30,000 subscribers, and so I thought I'd celebrate by giving you the gift of mono-compatible stereo widening. <laughs> if you want this device, uh, link is in the comments and in the description. But before we get into using this device, what I'd like to show you is why we would want to work on stereo widening in this case. Let's go ahead and check out what I have going on here. So this is a fun little jam, but all the elements are stacked on top of each other. Check it out. So, okay, maybe normally I would consider changing some things about my composition here to make this a little bit more clear, um, such as the synth line over here, this thing. I might make that an octave higher so that it, it's just easier to hear. Or maybe uh, the bass line would be different, maybe I would EQ it differently. But today we're going to talk about stereo placement and stereo width. Now when you hear this jam, maybe the first thing you would think is, well, I'll just pan the elements that sound similar away from each other. And yeah, that's sometimes a good idea. Let's just go ahead and try that. So the Rhodes and this synth line are similar. So if I pan them away from each other, you know, that sort of works. But here's some of the reasons why it doesn't work for me. For me, there's a lot of weight to the roads. There's a lot of low mids, some thuddy kind of sounds. And when I pan those away from the center, I don't enjoy the sound of the roads. It sounds weighted to the left. Like I, it, that, that's just not, it doesn't work for me. Okay, so maybe something you would do is, is even is high pass the roads. But if I high pass the roads, it starts to lose its body and it's the character of that, that, that deep warm sound that it has, okay? So in this case, we're going to look at widening these sounds so that they have a stereo element and it causes some separation, right? Potentially you've heard of the Haas effect or Haas delay. What that is, is delaying one speaker or one side to be later than the other side so that it creates this wide stereo image. Let's just go ahead and check out the Haas effect. I'm gonna go grab a delay. It doesn't matter what kind of delay, but I'm gonna use Ableton's delay and put it on the roads, all right? I'm gonna delete my device for now. I'll turn the dry wet all the way up, the feedback all the way down. I will unlink the delays. This is the most important thing that we do. We're unlinking the delays. And then we're turning them on millisecond mode or time mode, if you will. I'm gonna turn the first delay as low as I can get it. Ideally, it would go down to zero, but in this case, this is just a quick and dirty uh, demonstration. The other one, I'm gonna turn it down to something below 30 milliseconds or less. And the reason I do that is because delay that's above 30 milliseconds you can start to hear the actual physical echoes, okay? That's not what we want. We just want a stereo widening effect. So I'll put this, you know, 13, sounds good. So when I turn this off, listen to the roads. Now I'm gonna turn it on. You might be like, whoa, that's extremely awesome, like super wide. There's a problem with it though. Why wouldn't you just, <laughs> maybe the first thing you're thinking is, why wouldn't I use this on everything? That's incredible. It makes it super wide. Well, let's look at the master track. I have a utility plugin on here with the mono switch engaged. Basically, I have this on here, and this is something you all should be doing. I've key mapped my Q key to the on off switch here. So if I'm working on a set anywhere in the set, it doesn't matter. If I hit my Q key, it will disengage or engage a mono switch. What this will do is it'll help you check for mono incompatibilities. Basically what that means is that when you turn on mono, you listen to your mix in mono, instruments will all of a sudden that are, that are not tamed in the right, correct way, or not mono compatible, I should say, will disappear from the mix. Maybe they'll get super loud. Maybe they'll sound really strange. So in this case, I'm just gonna look at my Rhodes track, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to toggle on and off my mono switch, okay? This is the Rhodes sound with the mono switch not engaged, right? It's nice and wide, right? I'm gonna turn the delay off. So it sounds really good. I'm gonna now play this sound with this delay on, I'm gonna turn mono on. Oh, what is that horrible thing? So it kind of sounds like a, like a flanger, right? 
you've heard people talk about phasing, right? I'm sure you've heard this term thrown around a lot and you don't know what it is. Well, you're literally listening to what happens when you phase a signal, okay? What's going on, this is, this is what's called comb filtering. Basically, because you're taking one waveform and you're slightly delaying it a little bit, you're going to get peaks and valleys in the sound that are going to severely alter the sound. And this is, this is you know, starting to cause an audible effect known as phasing, right? This isn't really desirable in this case, especially in the low end or the low mids of this sound because it's just, it's robbing certain notes of volume and, and other things, right? So I can change the delay time. And as I change that delay time, I get kind of different sounds, right? Well, let's turn off the, the mono switch. You might be thinking, well, I really, really like that. Like, I, I, I don't know, like I, I want that to, I really like that width. And if I play it with everything else, I get. It's almost like the Rhodes has been liberated from this, <laughs> from this mix. And it's like, it's just sitting on the outside, giving everything else a lot of space. Okay. so. We've determined we kind of like what's going on with the Haas effect, but we realize when we turn on the mono switch, now I'm going to play the mono mix with everything in it. And you can hear that kind of like weird kind of uh, flan like stuck, stuck in one spot flanger kind of sound, right? Okay, let's talk about how we can mitigate this, all right? So I've dropped my effect into the Rhodes track. Now let's, let's go ahead and listen to what it's doing. I'm gonna turn this effect on and off, and we're gonna to listen to the difference. This is with it off. Now it's on. We have this gorgeous stereo image. None. That stereo image. Now, let's listen to it when we A, B it in mono. This is the original. that's in stereo. Now, you can still hear a little bit of that flanger effect, right? But it's severely, severely limited. There's a lot less of it. Why? Well, what we've done is I've got a couple controls here that help us work with instead of against <laughs> the phasing issue that's happening when we use the, the, the Haas effect, right? So let's go over some of those things. First of all, I think the most important thing to understand is that you, if you want to work with the Haas effect, each instrument is going to, there's no setting on any Haas delay that's going to work with every instrument. What you need to do is you need to tune it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the Haas volume really high. So plus 6 dB, right? This is the first step. The next step is then to tune while listening to the whole mix in mono. This is the most important part. You need to turn your mono switch on. So my mono switch, as you can see, is on. I'm gonna turn the Haas volume all the way up and then we're gonna to listen to this sound. And I'm going to move the time knob, which is this knob right here, I'm gonna move this time knob until it works with the instrument, okay? You'll see what I mean. So that sounds really bad, right? It's amazing, these little tiny changes in the delay time will actually make the the, the Haas effect work better or worse with the Rhodes, right? So the way I like to do this is kind of find a good area like by, by dragging, clicking and dragging, and then I'll push shift and I'll click up or down to get just dialed in perfectly, right? So let's listen to this. This is where it was before. But as I move it down, I kind of like that setting, that's nice. Let's maybe try a different area. So I'm gonna kind of turn it up a little bit. Okay, so I really like that. I like around 10.4 milliseconds. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the mono, okay? And now let's A-B this. That's original. And that's with the, the widener. Now, I'm gonna turn the mono back on. I'm gonna A-B this. So you can still hear that, that Haas effect, right? There's, there's a lot of it on there. Well, this is the next part. We want to tame this. We don't want this effect to be super flangery <laughs> when we reduce to mono. So what I'm going to do is pull the Haas volume back down to a reasonable degree, okay? 
I'm going to turn off my, my mono switch. And that sounds really nice. There's, there's a nice width to this. Okay, so let me go over some of these other controls. You have a filter frequency, right? What, this is important. Basically, we're kind of getting that, that delay. This is, this is filtering the delay, not the original signal. This, this is filtering out some of the low end that's causing that horrible phasing that, that's down low. And then the filter width will just be, you know, how wide this, it's basically a bandpass filter, how wide it is, right? So as I turn it down, let's listen to mono. As I turn it down, you're gonna hear more and more phasing getting, getting introduced, right? But it's still pretty good that this, it happens to be that this, the millisecond setting on this delay time happens to work here. So here's with the mono switch off. Here's with it on. Now, some of these other controls that I have here are the main pan. So main pan meaning this is the main signal, the original signal. And I, I've made it so it can't get as wide as the delayed signal. Why? Well, the main reason is that I don't ever want to hard pan my original signal. And if, if I did want to do that, I already have a pan knob right here, like a track panning knob, okay? The other delay though, the, the, the delayed signal, the Haas signal, you could think of it, has full panning control. Well, why? It's because most of the time the Haas volume is gonna be quieter than the original signal, right? So I'm gonna pan this pretty wide and I'll pan this, you know, 15 to the left, right? So this gives the effect of the left channel. It sounds like it's, it's sort of panned to the left, doesn't it? Now, if I pan this to the right and I pan the delayed signal to the left, it just starts with the right side now. So now it sounds. So basically the delayed signal is going to sound kind of inferior to the main pan signal, okay? And you can use this to your advantage, right? So then the last thing, the last two controls I have are stereo width and this is because when you use the, the, the Haas effect like all the way, it's very dramatic, right? So without it. And to me, I was trying to avoid earlier that weighted sound where it sounds like there's a lot of low end on the outsides. This stereo width control can really help kind of just lower that effect just a little bit and get it just right. So without it, with it in mono, in stereo, okay? The last thing I wanna show you is there's a gain compensation situation going on here. Usually when something becomes stereo, uh, and where it once was mono or where it was panned to the center, it tends to sound a lot louder, right? So what I've done is I've added a little bit of gain compensation so that when I AB this Rhodes, I'm gonna set it back on zero. So, so now that it's on zero, let's AB this with the mix. See how the roads kind of jumped out in front? Well, that's why I have this gain compensation. You kind of want to turn it down a little bit if it if it happens that the widener is making it louder, right? Seems like negative three might be the best setting. Okay. Real quick, I'm also super happy to announce that I'm now offering super curated and thorough Ableton online courses for macro topics like live performance, mixing, sound design, looping, songwriting. So if you like my teaching style, click the link in the description down below so you can learn more about it. So now that I've got that set, I'm gonna grab another instance of this and drop it on the synth. So what I was saying before is that you, can, you have a main pan and a, and a delay pan. Well, on the synth, I'm gonna go through this action a little bit faster. So the first thing, turn the Haas all the way up, make sure that your mono is engaged, and we're gonna tune it. So you can really hear that Haas effect there. What I wanna do is try to get this to be in a, in a position where it sounds better, right? So I'm listening in mono, and I'm moving my delay time around, and I have the Haas volume all the way up, right? So that, that's kind of nice. In fact, this sound 
it's interesting. Some sounds really work with, with the Haas effect and that kind of comb filtery sound. It almost sounds better. I, I enjoy it. It has more character, right? So I'm going to mess with some of the other controls while still listening in mono. Okay, so now that I have this set, let's listen to it with the Haas volume back down a little bit. Let's listen to it in stereo, okay? So without it. Sorry. Nice. The reason that I have these controls on here, these main pan and delay pan controls, instead of just a static setting, is because you can then get two instruments to kind of work on opposite sides, right? Remember before we just tried to hard pan the roads in the synth? Well, in this case, I have it so that the main pan on the synth is on the left side and the main pan on the roads is on the right side. So now we have this really beautiful situation where neither instrument sounds too weighted on either side, but I've just kind of done the opposite thing on both of them, right? So now we get... That's so nice. Okay, so let's look at the bass line. I'll grab my widener, and one more time, let's just go ahead and go through this real fast. I'm going to turn on my mono switch. Important. That's the first thing, right? I'm going to listen to just the bass line, and now I'm going to adjust for, turn the Haas volume all the way up. I know that this is a bass line. I really have to be careful about that low end, so I'm going to definitely have my filter frequency up a little bit, and I'll set the width pretty low. And let's just listen to this. You can hear that. You can hear those those hilarious flangery sounds kind of moving around. We gotta find the right spot. So I really like seven milliseconds. Now, because this is a bass line, I want to be very careful about, first of all, the low end, and second of all, I want to be, I don't want to pan this very wide, right? I just want, I just want a little bit of effect. So I'm going to kind of pull these in a little bit. The, I'm only going to, I'm only going to go five to the left, and I'm going to open the, the delayed signal a little bit to the right. So let's listen to this in context. Now listen to how different that is. It's because my Haas effect is way, way loud. We want to pull that down, right? So let's listen to the bass line solo. Now you can tell that in this case, the gain compensation shouldn't be turned down. Because uh, as with all things, let's look at this See this green right here? This is what you're hearing. This is this is how you hear volume. It's RMS level, right? I want this to kind of match when I AB this effect. And you can see that it's hitting almost 18 when it's off, so I need to turn this back up to zero. And let's see what we got. Still need to turn it up a little bit. So that's why the gain compensation has two directions. Now listen to how much more character and life that gives the bass line. Okay, so now I'm going to listen to this mix with all the wideners on. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to key map the W key to all of my wideners. I'm going to turn it off. And let's listen to this mix. So everything's on top of it. Everything's on top of each other, right? Now I'm going to turn it on. Now we're going to listen in mono. Awesome. Well, if this is something that you're interested in, you can get this device in the comments. Uh, if you feel like paying for it, cool. If you don't, cool. Just put zero in the little thing. Much love, everybody. If you like this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Thank you.